This is Chris Chopic here at IDEX Neocon and Green Building Festival, Light Canada, uh, with Sandra Lester. Uh, Sandra, you did a, a, a very compelling talk this morning. Can you uh, just give me the very the Coles notes, the, the condensed version? Sure. Um, so interior designers, they have a few leverage points when they are designing a project, whether it goes for a lead CI certification or not. Um, the primary leverage point, it would be your, your location that you're um, deciding upon with your client. So before the lease is signed, a number of things need to be determined, whether you can get lead prerequisites or credits, depending on what lease you negotiate with your client. Whether you're going to sign a 10-year lease, whether you have bike storage, separate metering, um, you live at, you're going to be uh, located in a walkable neighborhood, etc. So that's the first leverage point, is, is your space determination. The second leverage point is really about um, light, daylighting, and optimizing daylighting, reducing the daylight load. And then your third leverage point is about the materials that you choose in your space. So being careful about those three leverage points are, are very important. So uh, tell me a little bit more about, about uh, uh, how that contrasts to conventional thinking about commercial space. Well, um, your, your typical designer would go through your, their space program with a client and then just tick the boxes and make sure that they've covered everything. Um, a, a savvy interior designer now goes through the program with the idea of number of people served instead of the number of people occupying a space. So reducing, um, overlapping programmatically, um, creating some head down space that are very tiny and compressed, but also opening up and giving more fluid workspace for more shared space in the open office as well. So a, a client is going to appreciate an interior designer if they save them money and save them space requirements, but a typical interior design fee is per square foot. So um, settling on a fixed price with your client is probably key going forward in, in helping them reduce their impact on the environment and saving them some money. So it's all about uh, tactical output. So I save operating costs, I create a better experience for my clients and my employees, and therefore I have a, a stronger success in the space as a business. That's right. So the, the, the worst outcome of a lead CI space is reduction in acoustics. So really looking at um, the program early on and seeing how you can optimize the program to um, create a better acoustic work environment for your, your staff is really going to, to help um, increase your your opportunity for um, a beneficial outcome. And uh, so if somebody wants to get a hold of you to um, tap your um, your resource um, to, to get in touch to get you involved in a project, where are they going to find you? They can find me at my website, um, www.affectingchange.com. Affecting change with an A. Yeah, okay. that's right. And on Twitter, um, at Affecting Change is my Twitter handle. Um, or they can just look me up on, on Google Maps and give me a call. Thanks very much, Sandra. appreciate you being here, and thanks very much for your great presentation this morning. Thank you. Yep.